We're gonna jump straight into it and we're gonna look at the barrel roll against the uh, our opponent and turtle dropping their hips away from us. Now it was the barrel roll in the back in the uh, turtle basics. I can't remember what I call these instructionals. I've done we've done so many of them at this point. But the barrel roll, you have to act really quickly because we have chest to back connection, we have direct rotational control, not rotational bait or lever based rotational control. And so we gotta be so on point. We gotta be jumping to the other side of our opponent. We gotta be creating a wedge with that knee so it just starts like that pressure. If I got this control and Kevin starts dropping his left hip away from me, I have to so quickly move and make sure that my left knee comes in to create a wedge that then will act as a fulcrum, a pivot point, for me to take Kevin's center of gravity over to the other side. Gotta be on point. But with lever-based rotational control, we get to be lazy. And we can be a lot more slow with this. And so if you've gone through the advanced back control, you know that with the cross body rotational system, we're able to actually start to have our chest disconnected from our opponent's back. So rather than have to stay super tight to them, all I have to start doing from here is looking to start finding a way to get my knee inside my opponent's uh, knee elbow connection here so that I can start to take, uh, start to establish some lever based control. So as Kevin's got his knee, and elbow connected. What I'm looking at doing is taking my right knee, bring it up high because there's space here, not down here. I start high and I cut through like a knife so I'm able to separate that space. By separating and creating this space now, what I'm looking at doing is still keeping my hips tight to him. His knee is on the ground, so it's a load bearing frame. It's hard for me to get my leg in there. But as Kevin starts to drop his hip away from me, that knee is usually going to start to become light. Even here, it's still there, tight, like this. But as he starts to turn even further, that leg lifts. As soon as that leg lifts, I'm inserting that twister hook. By me having that twister hook, even if I just fall off to the side here, and we can see that Kevin's center of gravity is off to the side of me rather than on top of me, I was unable to create a fulcrum where I just didn't care to. I'm still able to, from here now, with this rotational control, cross body control, I can now kick his leg out to the side, wind up this momentum, and pull him over so I'm able to put in that other hook. I could obviously belly him down and do like the Khabib maneuver as I taught. This is why it's important that you guys have gone through that material. Here, inserting the motorcycle grip, as long as I got the motorcycle grip, even if I don't have anything else, as long as I can just put weight on his hip, I feel very comfortable here. As Kevin starts to try and drop, I don't even have my knee in this time, but I can still insert that hook. And now with that hook inserted, even though I'm disconnected, I'm able to, at this point, utilize this lever to rotate him either direction I want to, to make sure that I can create vulnerability breaking his alignment. So here, knee elbow connection. I can't get in there, he's in super strong alignment. He's taking his ball and going home as we like to call it, where this isn't a great position to be in in a fight, especially when they're striking. In Jiu Jitsu, we can get away with this. Uh, we do this against bears when they attack us because we're hoping the bear's gonna get bored. They're gonna nibble on us and they're gonna leave. I am not gonna get bored from here. I'm gonna happily keep attacking Kevin. So here, I just bring this knee up and I go into this mirrored uh, right leg to right leg. At this point, I'm just keeping myself on his hip so that I don't fall completely off to the side. I can even be here, sprawled out, watch his leg. As Kevin starts to drop his hip, all I'm doing is just kind of surfing on top of him. And as that knee comes in, I bring my leg in here. My knee is still pointing straight down, but this comes up to the sky, my toes hook, and now I have the twister hook, which is now gonna give me that ability. Like here, I'm more on top of him, so I could even bring my left knee up behind his hip here, and now use that as a fulcrum, where now as we lift, you can see how my knee has created that fulcrum for him to rotate over top like a teeter-totter. But even if my leg was more out here and the hip drops, I now extend that twister hook to create that external rotation in his hip, and now with that, I have the ability to move him. Let's do one. So here I got the control. He's gonna try and drop his hips away from me. 
Even if I kind of hesitate for a second, I can't quite figure out. All I'm doing is from here, as is he's got that knee elbow connection a bit, is I'm just looking at adjusting my hip angle so I can get over top of the leg. If he's really connected and I feel like there's flexibility, I generate base with my left foot to lift my hip to bring my leg over. Get that hook. Move them all the way around. I like techniques that give me a ton of control over my opponents so that I don't have to use very much athleticism. Kevin's very athletic, does all these crazy explosive movements that I have a hard time keeping up with. I beat him by being lazy and using really good technique that allows me to slow my opponent down so that I don't have to work too hard. And that's how I'm able to get away with being <laughs> out of shape all the time. So lever-based rotational control, it's more uh, finicky. You gotta be very uh, careful with how you're using it, but it's gonna give you so much more control over your opponent and it allows you to move much slower and still be successful.